Today, we're gonna to be covering how you can build out a decision tree machine learning algorithm uh, through sklearn and also Python. Now, what this is, is it's a supervised machine learning model that uses pre-labeled data. How this works essentially is we split up the data based off of different criteria. Think of like how a flow chart works. Now, how this is broken down, at the very top, we have a root node followed by decision nodes on each side. And when we get to a final outcome, that's gonna be considered a leaf node. Kind of a good example of this is if someone is gonna complete an ultra marathon, we may look at different data points, such as like how many miles of training per week does a runner have? What's the farthest distance run by the runner? Has that runner completed an ultra marathon before? And from there, we can have the final decision if we can predict if a runner will complete an ultra marathon or not. Now, one caveat before we start programming, this is not the most accurate model, but since it is fairly simple to code and quick and easy to run, it's a great starting point into machine learning. All right, I'm gonna jump on my computer and let's start coding. All right, we have a blank Jupyter Lab notebook over here. Let's start. So import pandas as PD. Shift and enter, that runs that cell and builds out a brand new line. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is import my data in over here. Now I have a CSV called 500 hits. I'll explain how this specifically works, um, but I'm just gonna copy this code over here. So df equals pd.readcsv with the file name over here. And then I have to put encoding allowed in one, otherwise it will not work. Now the CSV will be available. It's down below in the description and it is on my GitHub page. Uh, so that way you can download it, import it and start running this code. So we have that over here. And I'm just gonna put a head over here just to show you how this works. So essentially I, I grabbed the top 500 hitters in baseball uh, based off of how many hits they've had across their lifetime. And over here for the Hall of Fame, right? Uh, that's what we're going after. One, if a player is in the Hall of Fame, zero if they're not. And I did remove some of the data in here too. Uh, so any active players, someone that retired less than five years ago or steroid users, um, just because they have weird cases for the Hall of Fame. If you're an active player, you can't make the Hall of Fame. Five year minimum uh, past retirement to make the Hall of Fame. And steroid users, they aren't technically banned, but there's no steroid members uh, that are officially in the Baseball Hall of Fame. So I removed those because they had no chance. So what we wanna do first is clean up this data a little bit before we're in the model. Uh, so I'm gonna drop the player column and I'm also gonna drop caught stealing because I don't care about those. So just put df equals df the drop, and then we'll put columns equal. We're gonna put the two columns over here. So we have player, all caps, and then also we have CS, not computer science, cot stealing. And that just drops them from the data frame. I'm not gonna rerun the data frame just to show you guys how that works, but you just gotta believe me on that one. Uh, next, we need to split up our data between X and Y. Uh, so everything over here, minus cot stealing and player name is gonna be X. Or Y is gonna be Hall of Fame because that's what we're trying to essentially predict. Uh, so all you have to do on the side of things is put X equals DF the I lock, and then we're gonna put a colon over here, and then we're gonna do zero through 13. We're gonna shift and enter over there. And then, by the way, I put capital X, that's just standard across the board when you're running machine learning models, then lowercase y. And for this one, we're just gonna grab this Hall of Fame over here. Uh, so you can essentially have this code. And then what we're gonna do is remove this zero over here. We just wanna have 13. And it's just gonna grab the last one. And now we have our X and Y. Our next step is gonna be uh, to split up our data between a training set and also a testing set. Uh, so you do that through train test split. So first we have to import this. So we're gonna do it from SK learn the model selection import train test underscore split. Now that is imported over here. Uh, the next thing is we can actually run this. So how do you run this is you put a X train, then you have to X test, remember capital X's. Then you have Y train, Y test, just like that. And then it's equal to, we'll put train test split over here. Let's put our capital X and also our lowercase Y. Then we need to set up a random state. So that way, if we run this in the future, it can run exactly the same. I'm just gonna put down 17 and then we have to do our test size. I always just put 0 0.2, feel free to put whatever you would like. And that's gonna say like 80% of data is gonna be in train, 20% is in the test, right? Shift and enter and I do have an issue because I misspelled size. 
So shift and enter, and now we are good. So just to show you the sizes of these, just to show that I am not lying to you on that side of things, just put x train dot shape, right? 372 by 13, right? And we do x test dot shape, right? 93 by 13. And just to show you too, uh, if we just put over here y train, right? 372, and you have to believe me on this one. So y test, and we have, so we know that is working out. So now we can look at using our decision tree classifier. So let's import that in. So from sklearn.tree, which is a little bit different than some other stuff we've used in the past and other videos. So import decision tree classifier like this, right? All capital, unlike train test split. And then I'm just gonna say DTC equals, and I'm just gonna call this. Now I'm not gonna put any parameters in here. I'm gonna do a second run of this to, just to show you a few parameters and how we can kind of tweak this up. Uh, but I'm gonna shift and enter and this now runs. Now, just to show you all the different stuff that you could throw in here, all you have to do is dtc.get underscore params like this. And you can see all the different options over here. So our second run, we're gonna be using CC alpha over here because I do think it is kind of important with this data that we are gonna be running. And then also we'll take a look at Criterion over here. So we'll change up both of these in a second, but let's run this first version of it. So if you're familiar with other machine learning models, right, you're gonna have to fit your data. So the DTC, we're gonna do dot fit, and let's just throw in our training set over here. So X train, and then also our Y train. Then you'll see this over here and boom, and we know that it is working. And let's do our prediction, right? So y prediction equals dtc dot predict. And then you're gonna throw in your x test over here just to see how our prediction works. So now we have our prediction over here and we can start running some of the different uh, metrics to determine how good this model was for the data. So the first one I'm gonna do is a confusion matrix, which is really popular. So from sklearn.metrics import confusion fusion, and then underscore matrix like this. And then I'm just gonna run it. Um, so just because it's better if you just throw the statement within print, I'm just gonna put over here confusion matrix, and then we'll do y underscore tests and y underscore prediction like that. And then we have our confusion matrix over here. So just to break this down, we have our true positive over here, and then we also have our true negative down below. And then also on the top right, we have false positive, then down over here, we have a false negative. And there's a few other metrics that we can actually get from the confusion matrix, but so much easier to run a classification report. So essentially, I'm just gonna copy this again, and instead of confusion matrix here at the end, I'm gonna put classification reports. Now that has been imported over here. And then essentially I'm gonna copy this and we'll put classification here instead of confusion matrix. And then we have a lot of data. So I'll explain how this all works. So first thing we have in here is precision, which takes a look at true positive divided by true positive plus false positive. So that takes a look at 52 and also nine, right? Then we have recall, which takes a look at true positive over true positive plus false negative. So that's your 52 over here and also your 11. So that's how we grab that over here. Now F1 is a calculation between precision and recall. Essentially you take two times precision times recall divided by recall plus precision. And that's where we get this over here. And then I wanna take a look at the weighted average. So we have seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, eight across the board, which is okay. It's not the best in general. Um, but you can also see like what had the biggest impact on our model. And I'll just show you how to do that real quick. I'll build up a few more cells down below. Uh, so how we're gonna do this is dtc.feature underscore importances like this. And essentially it's gonna give us this array, which tells you how important each of the different features are. And technically you'd have to go back over here and see like, okay, we have years, games, at bats. Uh, but there's a much easier way to represent this data. So let's turn this into a data frame. 
Uh, before that though, I just want to show you one quick trick. If you put x.columns in here, right? Uh, it shows you all the specific columns from our original data frame over here. Uh, but we're going to be using that when we're building our new data frame. So I'm just going to say features, right? Equals PD dot data frame it needs to be capital F, right? And then what we're going to do first is throw in this over here, feature importances, and then we're going to do index equals, and then we're going to grab this X dot columns. And that does not work. Let's see why it is not working. The reason is I put date frame, not data frame. Okay. So now all we have to do over here is features dot head. And I'm just going to put 15 in here to show everything, right? But now you can see how important everything is for this model. Now, it makes sense that hits are the most important on this case because we took the top 500 um, baseball players with hits all time and determined if they're making the Hall of Fame or not, right? So our hits, we have 0 0.403 on this side of things. Uh, it's kind of interesting batting average. Too. Batting average isn't the best metric in baseball, um, but you would have a higher batting average the more hits you have. So that's pretty high over here. Walks is actually a lot higher than I would have anticipated. Home runs is a bit low, um, but there's not many hitters that have like 500 plus home runs that also have a lot of hits. It's kind of weird with baseball. And then you can see over here, uh, games, years, at-bats, which at-bats uh, has more significance in years or games, which makes sense, right? More at-bats, more opportunities to get hits and different things like that. But essentially, this shows you how important each of these different features are within our model. Okay, so I hinted at a little bit earlier, throwing in a few different parameters. I'm going to do it now. So what I'm going to do this time is DTC2, and we're going to run this decision tree classifier again. So decision tree classifier. And this, the reason why I'm also running this second time so you can get used to the code, uh, but also show you a few other things. So we're going to put criterion equals entropy. So it's another way to kind of run this model. So we should get a bit different results on it. And then we're going to do CC alpha. So CCP alpha equals 0 0.04. Now CCP alpha, this one over here, it helps if your model is overfitting, which I think is the case because we have a ton of different metrics that we're going to be taking a look at and not all of them are that important. So uh, what I'd recommend if you're running this for the first time is trying to keep this close to zero. Uh, because it does have a pretty big impact. So I'm just going to run 0 0.04 on the side of things, right? And that is now working. I'm going to build out a few more cells over here. Um, like before, I'm also going to fit this data. So DTC2 dot fit. Then you throw over here X train and you have Y train. And then we see um, our parameters in here, CCP, and then also criterion, right? Entropy on this side of things. Now we can do our predictions. So I'm just gonna do Y PRD two equals DTC two dot predict throw X test on the side of things. Then we can grab our matrix again. So I'm just gonna literally copy this over here. So do that. And while I'm over here too, I'm just going to copy this classification report. So I don't want to type those out, um, but that way we can see how this model works compared to the first one, right? So 50, 11, 9, and 23. Let's see how this did. 52, 9, 11, and 21. So a little bit different on this side of things. And then if we run our classification report, so overall weighted average 0, 079, 0, 078, 0, 079, 93. 078. So it's a, probably a little bit better overall, uh, but didn't really make too much of an impact on that side of things. Then, like before, just to see how this significance works over here with the feature importances, I'm going to copy that and we're going to throw that over here, right? So I'm going to say features two equals PD dot data frame, DTC two dot feature importance index, right? Uh, so that's why it's a little bit different. And then we'll just put over here the head. 15. And then you can see, so this CCP removed different parts of the tree. So you can see that it only kept in general batting average and then also hits everything else is zero on the side of things. Now, what this is showing is what we did with CCP. So essentially what CCP does is it removes parts of the tree uh, to stop overfitting. So you can see now that years, games, at bats, runs, they made them all zero. 
Uh, they kept batting average in over here and then also hits. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel as this does take a bit of effort to make. Now, if you want to learn another machine learning algorithm, I have one over here on Canon classification. Really recommend you watch that one next.